today I'm going to show you how to get about a 95% yield out of a tenderloin PISMO. What is a PISMO? What does PISMO stand for? P-S-M-O. Peeled, meaning most of the fat is taken off. Side muscle on, okay? Most of you know the side muscle could be known as a chain, uh, but there it is, that's your side muscle. So peeled, side muscle on, PISMO. Wholesale price on PISMOs right now are ranging anywhere from $12.50 to $16 a pound wholesale. The PISMO is the most tender of all cuts on the entire carcass. It's the most sedentary muscle. It literally does nothing. It has no, there's no heavy connective tissue in here. It's just a really super tender piece of meat, okay? Uh, it's the most well-protected muscle, completely covered with bone on one side, completely covered with fat on the other side. The most well-protected muscle on the entire carcass. The most expensive muscle on the entire carcass. And above all, and the reason why we're here today, it's the most difficult to make your profit margin on. Well, I'm going to help you with that today. I'm going to show you how to get your profit margins out of this by using a powder that's known in the industry as meat glue. I would ask that you look that up on Google and you'll see the actual name and where you can get it and how much it costs. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. This bag right here is two pounds and it was almost $200. This is not a cheap item, but you don't use a lot of it. You use very little. It is a mate. You're going to see the finished product. We're going to show you how to apply it today. And then I'm going to show you what it was like when I did it yesterday. Okay. When the meat glue is used, it's odorless, it's tasteless, it's invisible. You don't see it. All basically what it is is a powdered protein that coagulates the two muscles together. It, it, they, it, they literally adhere together. They don't come apart during cooking and they don't come apart in the freezer. It's pretty wonderful. So the first thing we're gonna do, we've identified what, we're, what we have. Our, our end goal here is filet mignon steaks. That's our end goal. But when you're working with a Pismo, as most of you surely already know, you have a lot of waste. You have the ends, you have the ears, you have the, the side muscle. What am I going to do with all these things? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to get so much out of this that you will just probably want to just invite me over for dinner. That's how sure I am. Okay. So let's start by removing the side muscle. It's a natural seam. It's a natural separation. I'm just going to come in, taking my tip of my knife, being very careful. Remember, this is big money here. This is the most expensive muscle on the entire carcass. Okay, so what do we do first? Well, we have these ears. These pieces on the end, these, these ears, they're not called side muscles, even though they are on the side and they are a muscle, but we, we refer to them as ears. We're gonna come down the side, we're gonna open that up. All right. And we have one on the other side as well. The one on this side over here, lots of times ends up going into trim, but not always. Okay. And we're gonna peel this all down. I like to take as much stuff off by hand as I possibly can, because this is such an expensive piece of meat. Every time you cut into that red, you're losing money. Peel the skin down. Okay. Once you've done a couple of these, you'll find it's not that hard to do. It's common sense. It's expensive, so you got to be careful. You got to have a sharp knife. Okay. A lot of chefs in my career at the culinary, a lot of the chefs were were quite adamant about not having any fat on their tenderloins whatsoever. I get it. I understand. But you know, in my opinion in my humble opinion. We need a little bit of fat because it's going to cook off anyway. So here I'm just taking off the inside fat here. Now I'm going to do the same procedure to both of these Pismos. And at, what we're going to do at the end is we're going to attach these two Pismos together. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Let's let me finish tying this up a little bit or trimming this up a little bit. Okay, so I'm getting right down to see, 
you literally have one, two, three pieces. But actually what you don't see is that these two outside pieces, I'm going to separate those and I'm going to make those into I'm going to make that into one piece. It's going to follow that natural seam right at the bottom. Good. Okay. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking out those two side pieces, leaving them whole, but I'm leaving one piece. Okay. We're going to come back to this shortly. You're going to be surprised. Now lots of times, you know, if you were to leave this on there and cut your steak, cut right through them, you'll end up with, you know, these pieces, little pieces of filet that are falling off. Well, we're going to fix that. I'm going to show you how to fix that. Just get a little bit more trimming here. Okay. Now I got this, this ragged edge here. What am I going to do with this? Oh, you know what? We're going to save that piece. And we're going to save this piece. We're going to come back to that later. In the meantime, I'm just cleaning this up. Getting my inside fat. Okay. Turn it over. I'll make sure I get all my silver skin off. Silver skin is connective tissue. It's the tissue that separates the muscles. Okay, you want to make sure that you take as little red meat off as you possibly can. Red is bread. Red is money. We want it on the plate. We don't want it in the garbage can. A little bit of connective tissue here where it sat on the bone inside the loin. If you're wondering where this comes from on the animal, it's the very top of the animal, but inside. It's inside the animal, okay? If you were sitting on a cow, you'd be sitting on their strip loins. Underneath it is where the tenderloins are. They're inside the animal, up inside the carcass. So we're going to put that aside for now. And we're going to trim this piece up. Now we're getting some trim, it's got a little bit of red on it, so we're going to save that. This is pretty much all junk over here. All right, now I got to come in here. I'm going to do some flat trimming to take the fat off the top of this silver skin. Okay. I'm going to get underneath. I'm going to stay real close to that silver skin. Okay. Pull over cut. Okay, a little bit too much meat on there. My boss would get mad at me if he saw that. Okay, this process that I'm doing right now is called denuding. D-E-N-U-D-I-N-G, denuding. We're removing silver skin. And we're not gouging the meat. As you can see, there's no knife marks in that meat. Back over here. Again got to take your time with this. And, you, and if you don't have a sharp knife, forget about it. See how nice and clean that comes off? Beautiful. That's what you're looking for. Okay. A little bit more here. Boom. All right. Now, we want to clean up the side just a little bit. I want to use a little bit longer knife. All I'm doing is flat trimming. Just taking so I'm shaving it basically I'm I'm shaving the balloon is what I'm doing here without breaking the balloon we're taking the shaving cream off we're shaving the balloon so we're clean turn it over we have a whole new set of problems okay this is all the meat that's in between the uh, the bones on the spine and we want to come in here and we're going to just clean this up a little bit and we're going to basically flat trim these are called shingles you're going to take the shingles off, all right? Because these are very thin pieces that will just, they won't be very appealing to the customer when they're on the plate. So let's get rid of them. And it's usable trim. They're called shingles. Notice I'm being so careful not to take too much off. Okay. 
that end, we got it, we're gonna have to sacrifice that end just a little bit. That's okay. We'll sacrifice it now, but we're gonna use it later. So that piece is now clean. Okay. Okay, so at this point, I have got both of my pismos denuded. I've got the so the ears, I, I refer to them as ears, I got those peeled off and put aside. I've got a little bit of trim here that's going to end up into a different dish in a shortly. And I've got some usable trim that is good for hamburger. Okay, again, uh, in-house ground filet burgers. Uh, you, whatever marketing works for you, that's, that's up to you. Here are the chains or the side muscles. And I'll never forget one time I was delivering to a restaurant and I watched a chef take, I think there was eight or nine of these on his table and just pushed them off into the garbage can. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that. I said, what are you doing? He said to me, well, what am I going to do with them? And I continued to show him what to do with them, which I'm going to do really quick right now. Take this side muscle, shave off the outside edge. Remember, it's part of the fillet. It's part of the tenderloin. It's tender. It's tender. Okay? You've got to be creative at these times. This particular cut of meat right here, a year ago, a little over a year ago, was $10 a pound. Now you're looking at upwards of $15 a pound for, for Pismos. Okay? You've got to get something working for you because you cannot afford to do this and push it off into the garbage can. I was like shocked when I saw that. So I took the chain, I trimmed it down. Now luckily we have two of them here, so I'm going to show you two different things. And this guy, remember there was eight or nine of them on the bench. I don't remember exactly, but I know there was way too many to throw away. One would have been too many to throw away. All right, so we have this side muscle here. What is stopping me from making filet kebabs? Right there, filet kebabs. Market them however you want to market them. Just don't throw them away. They cook beautifully. All right, there's so much you can do here. All right, There's, that's one, that's one thing. Little filet kebabs, let's put those over here out of the way for a few minutes. All right, let's go to the other one really quick. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just taking off the outside fat. This one was a favorite for me, being in my Italian background. I'm sure you chefs out there and have all heard of the term brajol. Well, if you've got eight or nine of these things on your bench and you don't know what to do with them, this is another way to go for another added meal. Or if nothing else, just something to put on the pasta dishes. Okay. Take this piece. Now we're going to open this up. We're going to open this up. I'm going to lay my knife flat. I'm going to cut in. I'm going to open that up. I all, basically, all I did here was I butterflied it. That's all I've done. So you want to get a little creative, you want to make this into a brajol, no problem. We can stuff this, we can fill this with cheese, we can fill it with spinach, we can fill it with hard boiled eggs, uh, anything that you're, you're used to doing. And then you can roll it, okay, boom, cut it, make another one, okay. That sure is a lot better than getting pushed off into the garbage can and it's tender, guaranteed tender. You put that in the, my, my wife would put that right in the sauce, let it cook all day long, it's a beautiful thing.
Back over here, we have the main body of the Pismos. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to get so many more portions than you would normally get if you didn't use this method. Okay. Now, let's look at this. This is a torpedo-shaped muscle. So by the time I take off the ends, really, all I've got is this. Well, what about this? What about this? we got to do something with that. All right. So if you notice that these muscles are tapered, so let's take the two tapered ends and let's put them together like that. Now, holy cow, it's the same width all the way through. What did we do? Wonderful. What about over here? I still got that end. Well, a couple different things we could do here. I could literally cut this back, butterfly it, tuck it under, and continue my shape. Over here, I'm thinking I'm just going to leave that alone because when I go to finish, to finish this procedure, that's going to tuck in. We're going to have something really nice. So what are we doing with this? Well, this is where the meat glue comes into play. This is where the meat glue. We're going to take our meat glue. We're going to, we, we know how we want it to look. We've got it laid out exactly how we want it to be. What we're going to do now is we're going to open it up. We're just going to roll it open. And you can see where it's going to overlap. It's here, here, all the way down to here. We would take our powder, our transglutamate, transglutamatase, and we're going to sprinkle it on the connected areas where they're going to overlap. Okay, now you don't need a lot of this. It's going to soak right into the meat. That's too much. We're going to spread that out just a wee bit. We could even go with our finger just a little bit. You're not putting a lot on. Okay, you're not putting a lot on. You don't need to. It does a beautiful job. In a few minutes, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Finished. Okay, I'll put that back in there for now. Okay, so what I've done here is I've applied the powdered protein or the meat glue in the areas where the meat is going to overlap. Now I'm just going to roll it back together again, making sure that I've got the shape that I was looking for originally. Okay. We will take a long plastic bag or plastic wrap, whatever you have that's convenient for you. Cut the end off. We will open up one side. this out. We're going to bring carefully, take our tenderloins. Make, I'm holding them together here because I don't want to lose my shape. Put them in here. Pull my plastic back. Ooh, I got to put a little bit over here yet. This is where we tucked the tail under. You want to get a little bit on there. Okay. Go in here like so, close it back up again. Now, this is important. Verify that we got the size that we need. Verify we got the shape that we need. We got all the parts that are overlapping. We got the powder in there. I'm going to take this and roll over. We're going to pull back nice and tight, tight, tight. Okay. Okay. Tight. Okay. Now, we'll take the ends. We we'll hold the ends super tight and we're going to give it some rolls. Like a big sausage link. Okay, we're going to try and get it as tight as we can. See now, remember I had the ends, they were just a little bit pointy. 
And I said, we're going to tuck them in. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm tucking them in. Now, you allow this to rest flat in your cooler for eight hours. I usually do it overnight. Allow them to rest eight hours. And then what you will have when you're done, now this is cut shorter because I did for demo reasons so you can see I basically just a portion of what was there all clean all glued wrapped just like I wrapped the other one and there's my tenderloin from end to end the same shape okay. what do I do now make my cuts Can you tell that's two pieces of meat glued together? No, you cannot. No waste. The ends are in there. They're tucked in. They're tucked under or they're tucked in. Okay. So there you have the center of the body. Now I'm going to bring that other piece back just to show you what I did because I know this looks a lot smaller than the one that was on the table but I'll show you exactly why basically all I did was I just took a piece of it that's all I did I just took a half of it it was a little bit easier for me to store at the time when I did this okay but there it is there's your there's your tenderloins all right you can't tell that there's two pieces glued together there you can't get them apart Wrap it with bacon, cook it, whatever you want to do, but this is it right here. This is one side of, of two tenderloins put together. Okay. Now, what about these pieces? We talked about these pieces earlier. What are we doing with these? Same procedure. Exact same procedure. We take our powder and we sprinkle to the inside. This is a slotted spoon. All I'm doing is covering the area that I want to put together. Roll it up. Roll it up. Clean your table. This stuff, you, you know, you don't want this all over the place. Tuck that in a little bit. Okay. Back to our plastic bag again. Okay, put it in here, same thing, roll it in tight, tight, tight. What are we going to end up with? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, get those ends tucked in. Okay, store it just like that so it holds its shape. It will hold its shape. What do I come up with? What do I finish with? Here it is right here. And it freezes. It freezes well, not a problem. You can go ahead and make eight or 10 of these at one shot and then freeze it. These were in the freezer. Just to show you that they hold up. I, I did that purposely so you would understand that the, they hold up to the, uh, the glue will hold up. All right, and again, there it is. I think that's a pretty nice portion. It's even, and it came from here. It came from this, the front piece that we took off. You have just increased your yield tremendously. And remember, you're gonna use this for some grind. You're gonna use these for your brujol. You're gonna take your, your uh, filet kebabs. Had we not done this, you would have only gotten maybe six really nice portions out of the center of that one tenderloin. 
But because we took the ends, we took them off and we reshaped them, which gave us this. And then we took the, the body. Now here, there's two of them. Remember, this is, a, this is half of this long piece. We fold them together, okay, like your arms. Just fold them together. Make sure they're in the right position. Open them up. Glue it. Close them up. Wrap them up. Let it set for six or eight hours. Overnight would be better. And now you have got so many more portions. You've got your brajol, you've got your kebabs, you've got some trim that you can, if you get enough of it, you can make some burgers with. And really, this is what I'm throwing away. Right here. Maybe about a pound. Two, maybe a pound and a half at most. Maximum utilization is the master key to success. Not just a key, that'll open just doors and windows. The master key opens everything. And if you have maximum utilization, you've got the master key to success, and that's what's going to keep you in business. My name is Mark Alia, a lifetime butcher, past instructor at the Culinary Institute of America, where I was spent 13 of the best years of my life sharing my passion with my students and teaching them how to make money and stay in business. We're in some tough times right now, and you need to learn how to get as much product on that plate as you possibly can without throwing it into that red garbage can. Today's mission is to show you how you can take two tenderloin pismos and turn them into not just six steaks that you would normally get, but about 14 steaks that would come across this right here. This is two pismos that are put together. These smaller pieces are the ears, the front part, it could have been the Chateaubriand, was taken off and they are rolled and made into other portions, petite tenderloins. So today's mission is to get about a 90% yield, if not better, out of your tenderloin pismo. What do we do with the tails? The tails, you'll see how you can take the, the, the chain muscle, uh, side muscle, uh, a lot of people have different names for it. I opened them up, I cleaned them, I rolled them for brajol. I took my end pieces, some of these aren't even cut yet, so you can see what they were. The end pieces where the tenderloin tippers down to nothing, I just want to take a little bit off. These are all kebabs now, Sir, filet mignon kebabs. What's more tender than that? Okay, I hope you enjoy the show.